Hello everyone. Welcome to today's webinar. Today we'll be looking in some detail at file transfer automation and the various and really quite compelling business and IT benefits a file transfer automation solution can provide. My name is James Fox and I'm part of the team here at Hand Business Solutions. I'm just going to do a quick overview of Hand, who we are, what we do, uh, before handing over to Chris Thacker of Globalscape for today's main presentation. Uh, there'll be a, an opportunity for us to answer any questions towards the end of the session. If you do have a question at any time, just type it in the uh, chat or question uh, box. Who are HAND? HAND are a Globalscape master partner, the highest level of accreditation. We were recently invited by Globalscape to Texas in the United States, where we were awarded Globalscape Partner of the Year for 2012. We have extensive knowledge of the uh, Globescape platform, um, having delivered multiple enterprise implementations and configurations across the UK, Europe and Asia. Hand are a data-centric solutions and services provider. We provide solutions that help protect organizations' data at all stages, that is data on the move, data at rest and data in use. We have over 500 customers, some of the biggest brands and businesses in the world. We're a global organization. We have offices in the UK, the US, Singapore, and Malaysia. At hand, it's quite important to recognize that we don't just resell software, uh, but we provide a fully comprehensive end-to-end -end service offering, right from consultation strategy to software implementation and technical support. At hand, we see our solutions as part of a data framework. Now this framework is based upon data as one of the most important of all an organization's assets and really looks to help organizations achieve true data security with regards to both people and processes where data is concerned. And this encompasses all data and information transfers, whether they're person to person, system to system, application to application and so on, as well as the security of data at rest. Now to ensure the highest level of data protection, the HAND data framework aims to identify the key areas that need consideration and in turn looks at key solutions addressing these areas and concerns. Now the solutions we provide are built to ensure the protection and secure exchange and movement of information between you and your trading partners, as well as your employees and customers, solutions which resolve issues surrounding governance, risk and compliance, auditing and access control, the scheduling and automation of data transfers, which is something we're going to be looking at this afternoon, data loss prevention, as well as data management, visibility and business intelligence. As I touched on before, all our solutions are supported by a range of core services that include consultancy, including helping organizations understand and devise a solid data protection policy, strategy and direction, a range of professional services including software implementation, integration, training, 24-hour support. It's also worth noting that we select our vendor partners very carefully, only working with leaders in the sector. Very quickly, I'll just run over the range of data security solutions that HAND provide. These include secure file exchange, SSH information assurance, which includes SSH user key management, website security, data classification, data loss prevention and enterprise information protection, as well as data management and auditing. So you can see we really are a one-stop shop, as it were, for all your data security and compliance needs. Here are just some of our customers, and some of you have actually come along for this webinar today, which is great to see, so thanks for attending. Uh, you can see here we've worked with and are trusted by some of the largest and most recognized brands and organizations in the world. Right, without further ado, I will hand you over to Chris, who will take it from here. Many thanks. Thanks for that, James. So as James said, uh, my name is Chris Thacker. I'm with Globalscape, and um, I work with uh, clients and partners alike. Um, today we're going to talk about automation, and specifically um, our enhanced file transfer server. That's our managed file transfer 
uh, platform. Uh, so some of the things we'll cover are what exactly is managed file transfer, uh, some of the issues that you might be dealing with that would lead you to look at an MFT or managed file transfer system. And then once again, we'll focus on the automation aspects of that. Just a very quick bit about GlobalScape. Founded in 1996, uh, still today one of the most popular brands that we were known for in the early 2000s was Qt FTP. Um, that led us into the file transfer and into the enterprise file transfer space. There's a lot of information about our company, so I'm not going to talk, talk much about that, but there's plenty on the website. We are a publicly traded company, so our financials are public as well. EFT server, which is short for Enhanced File Transfer, is the primary product. So let's talk a little bit about MFT, or Managed File Transfer. What exactly does that mean? And why might you need that? So oftentimes, there are many reasons for uh, Managed File Transfer. Uh, there's different aspects of Managed File Transfer. There's person-to-person file transfer, system to system or application to application file transfer. Um, as noted earlier, HAND, for example, works uh, with a lot of their clients uh, from a, a DLP aspect and you know, a data loss prevention, data loss protection project uh, might involve multiple products and oftentimes an MFT product will play a part in that for various reasons, security being one of those. Um, there are lots of different use cases. Uh, the physical media, which is m mentioned here, is still a use case that we see quite often, where by eliminating physical media and going to digital transfer. Just a few quick statistics. These are a few years back, but I doubt it's changed that much. 71% um, are still using email. That number could vary. Um, plain FTP is another thing that is still quite commonly used. Uh, I hear it actually pretty frequently from auditors and security people that you know when they're running scans on networks, it's quite surprising how much uh, just clear text FTP is still out there. And physical media, as stated earlier, is, um, is still being utilized. So why should you even care about managed file transfer? Well, from a high level, it's, it's the business, it's the data that's flowing, uh, that's keeping the commerce going. Um, files are the containers, but of course inside the file is the data, and these are the things that keep your business moving. Managed file transfer can help you reduce risk, can mitigate risk. Uh, there's a lot of different features in MFT platforms, MFT products that might uh, map to a specific um, specification. PCI is the one that we see very frequently uh, that someone has involved in a PCI project. Their system is going to fall into scope of a PCI. Therefore, they need a managed file transfer product that provides the, the feature set that helps them uh, achieve that compliance. And that's PCI is such a well-written spec, but that can be brought across many of the um, compliance, the regulatory compliance uh, mandates that the companies have to deal with. Uh, the uh, European Union has en enacted some stronger uh, legislation. Uh, the Data Protection Act you know, has been around for a few years. And as you may or may not know, the Information Commissioner's Office has more rights these days to actually levy fines and penalties um, on companies. Managed file transfer can help streamline your um, processes when it comes to that data exchange. And a lot of that's a lot of what we're going to talk about today because it's the automation aspect is one of the things that really helps to streamline and make that whole uh, file transfer supply chain, business to business exchange, even the person to person exchange of file transfer um, much more efficient. 
So managed file transfer, like if you were to go out to Wikipedia, for example, and just look at the definition, uh, you would see that it, it encompasses a few different uh, aspects of technology that make up a managed file transfer system. So it's not necessarily new. It's been around for a long time as far as uh, being able to automate, being able to have, a, have uh, an aspect of security, uh, being able to have interfaces, all of these things around file transfer. But for many years, it was there were homegrown solutions. Um, so back around, I remember around the early 2000s, it's, uh, that's about the time where I think uh, one of the Gartner analysts sort of coined that term. And we saw managed file transfer and types of products that took these different features and combined them into uh, a single application. Uh, so you have automation as an aspect. You have security, digital certificates, exchange, non-repudiation, monitoring, visibility, um, all of these things make up what a managed file transfer platform is. Um, that's an older, uh, well, that's a couple of years ago. That was the last quadrant report that Gartner did. Um, and uh, you can see that at that point, uh, Globalscape was in the top right-hand corner. So we were considered a leader in the MFT space and still are, are today. Some other analyst firms have picked up um, talking about MFT, but there is no quadrant anymore. So let's talk about automation and what that means to um, manage file transfer, how that fits in. So why would you even want to automate? Well, most of the MFT vendors, Globalscape included, if you go and read our marketing information, one of the first things that we talk about is replacing scripts. Um, this is truly um, one of the primary reasons, though. At some point, scripts become very difficult to manage. Um, you also, with automation, rather than it being disparate processes with an MFT product, you can have a centralized control and visibility of the file transfer. So you have uh, a one-stop application where you can uh, control these things. Uh, a lot of automation may rely on keys, for example, uh, for authentication purposes, authorization purposes. So being able to manage those keys in a central place uh, can also be beneficial. It simply makes the file transfer uh, movement of data more efficient uh, when you have a managed file transfer system instead of you know, different scripts, for example. Uh, you're apt to have fewer points of failure with a managed file transfer system instead of having to call out to third-party applications, which um, brings with it the potential for another point of failure. Uh, this managed file transfer helps reduce that. Um, managed file transfer with automation can be thought of uh, as a type of orchestration. So as we'll see during this uh, presentation, uh, the ability to build these workflows out and orchestrate um, the data movement or the data flow uh, using an MFT product. And another one is uh, service level agreements. A lot of uh, file transfers are time sensitive. So being able to alert on something that did not happen, for example, uh, can be very beneficial. So if you're waiting for a file to arrive and it hasn't, for example. So as far as the architecture of the Globalscape solution, it's a front end and a back end type architecture. So looking at this drawing here, we can see that we have a DMZ here. And our actual product is called the DMZ Gateway. You can think of this as a proxy. And it's a specific proxy in the way that the connections work between the back end systems, which are the enhanced file transfer platform, along with uh, the Mail Express person to person exchange application. These will run in conjunction with each other, or they can run standalone. Uh, the EFT server is actually has the automation and the workflow engine component to it. Um, but by using this type of architecture, you eliminate the need to have any data stored uh, in the DMZ. 
Um, also, if you were to go to our website and read the technical information on how the connection between the gateway and the back-end platform works, you'd find that there's no need to open an inbound hole in this back-end firewall. And that's why the arrow is shown going out. Uh, data will actually stream through the DMZ to the back-end um, with no stop-off point here for file transfer. In other words, there's no uh, files ever, store, ever stored here. And because of this architecture, the automation aspect becomes very efficient and, and quick as well. And what I mean by that is much of the automation within the enhanced file transfer product is what we call event-driven. So it's real-time. So if an external partner, whether that be an automated process or whether that be an actual human being, uh, uploading a, a file over over their using their browser over HTTPS, the file and and using a secure protocol, the encryption would of course originate uh, at this endpoint. The encryption is maintained through the DMZ, and it would actually terminate on the back end platform here. Um, so as far as encryption, it is uh, end to end. But because many of the workflows are event driven by not having uh, a data uh, stop off here, a drop off here, but streaming on through to the back end, it will kick off the automated events immediately. And whatever the next uh, point or target may be in the data flow uh, is made much more efficient by this type of architecture. There's much more information about this available. Uh, this is just to give you a high-level uh, overview of our standard architecture. Uh, it works very well in PCI deployments just because of the way the PCI spec is written and the way that the connection needs to happen. So, so let's take a little bit deeper look at the actual automation features of the uh, EFT server. As I mentioned, at some point, using scripts may just become unmanageable. Um, if you've got you know, a few scripts, and then take that number and multiply it by tens or hundreds, um, you start to have a system that becomes very difficult to manage. And all the things that go along with trying to manage scripts, for example, the person that actually wrote the scripts, and if that person uh, decides to leave the company, uh, then somebody else falls into their place, and you may have experienced these types of problems yourself. What MFT does is it gives you the ability to consolidate and have a central point whereby you can control the um, automation aspects. So in other words, you wouldn't have to use a script. And what what might take you some time to actually write, in other words, the script, it may take you the time to actually code that script, um, you could do the same thing with a point-and-click workflow builder in a matter of minutes. And um, that's what we're showing here is just a bit of the uh, uh, organizational aspect. You've got different types of rules on the left here. And the actual workflow builder is showing us here what this actual rule does. But this being a script could potentially uh, have taken you, you know, 20, 30 minutes, whereas you could deploy this rule in a matter of two or three minutes. So time saver is, I guess, one of the uh, other aspects of this. And as we all know, time equals money. Centralized visibility is the other thing that you would get from an MFT system. So you've got automated jobs task, events, we refer to them as events in our actual product, but I've heard all kinds of different nomenclature. Um, you will have visibility of what those jobs are actually doing, the running, uh, if you need to maybe pause a job, stop a job, you can do those types of things. Uh, maybe a higher priority comes along and uh, you need to uh, move that one up in the, um, the data exchange. should be able to report on the automated events. Um, MFT systems should provide you the ability to uh, use reporting uh, uh, for 
uh, historical purposes or for troubleshooting as well. So if you get an alert, you may come and generate a report, or of course you'll have real-time visibility as well. But the point is, is you can draw reports against the activity, the automation activity. In our specific product, the information is being written into a SQL database. So that's where this historical information is coming from. The transaction information, including the automated events, are going into a, a SQL database. MFT systems should have some sort of scheduling capability. Um, this is a picture screenshot of the Enhanced File Transfer Platform scheduler. Um, so you should be able to come in here quickly, point and click, define the dates when you want the scheduler to run or not. Uh, there are often times when you want to tell a scheduler it may be running for a week and there may be a holiday. So that's why this is uh, the holiday diary or calendar there. kind of reiterating the point that it should be quick and easy to build an automated event. Um, they can become complex, so uh, the easy part um, will require a, a bit of training, I guess is what I'm saying, is in some cases the uh, complexity it can uh, be in enhanced, your ability to create rules can be enhanced by uh, some training. Now, the basic rules are very quick and easy to do, but once again, just learning how to use the tool is a part of the, the training services that, that HAND can provide, for example. I'll go a bit deeper into this in a moment, but what we're showing here is that this is, one, for example, a bit more uh, of a complex type automated event that could be created. So um, as we'll see in a few minutes that EFT has probably 10 or 12 intrinsic um, actions that can be uh, utilized from the automation aspect. Over and above that, we have something we call advanced workflows, which have uh, hundreds of actions. And this is where, usually this is where the training comes in. Uh, for some folks, though, there's no training needed. It is, if they're accustomed to uh, writing scripts, for example, this would be very, very easy for, for some, uh, somebody to use that's more accustomed to writing some code. I mentioned service level agreements, and I wanted to add this screenshot because this is a specific task that actually is just an out-of-the-box um, uh, action that we provide. So literally, this one has been designed uh, for that specific case when you have an expectation of a file arriving and you want to check for that. If that file has not arrived, then you may want to send an alert, notify, and start some sort of escalation process to see if there's a problem uh, in the data flow somewhere. So as I mentioned, uh, we classify um, some of our automation uh, as event-driven. And there are different types of events. So what you're seeing here is that some of the uh, events are, you can trigger, you can think of events as triggers as well. So file upload event, for example. Uh, when a file is downloaded, um, all of these different types of triggers um, are some of the events. I think there's probably um, over 40 or 50 types of events that we actually can trigger on. And uh, then there's hundreds of actions you can take off those triggers. Breaking it down a bit, the, the three most common types of events are a scheduled event, a folder monitor, for example, the file system events that I've talked about, connection or user events, or another one, for example, somebody changes their password and you want to be keyed on that or you want to be notified on that. Reiterating the most common types are the file upload, a folder monitor, 
a scheduled task. So folder monitor is an example of that is, let's say you have an application that produces files. And files are simply being dropped into a Windows folder, a Windows share. EFT can trigger off of that. It receives a notification that that has happened, and then therefore that is the trigger. And then you take some action on that. It's easy to create these rules. Once again, going back to using this a point and click workflow builder. So file upload, for example, you simply point and click on that. Folder monitor, we have an entire white paper that you can go download from globalscape.com that talks about our folder monitoring capability. And um, a component of that capability is called folder sweep. So there's a lot of redundancy built into the folder monitor. Um, folder monitors can actually be set up by which uh, that's a UNC path. So here, just for this screenshot, we see it's a local folder. But that could be a slash slash server slash share that you could be pointing to. Um, things can happen when you're pointing to other shares, perhaps to the connection, um, or even perhaps to the downstream target server that the folder monitor is going to send a file to. In other words, a folder monitor, a file has been dropped into a folder, and that triggers the folder monitor event. And one of the actions is to simply take that file and transfer it off to another system. Well, maybe that other system is down at that particular moment. But files have not stopped being added to the share. Um, so that is what folder sweep is about. It provides redundancy to ensure that those files are delivered when that target system comes back up online. Um, there's a lot more information about that on our website as well. Scheduled tasks, they're very easy and uh, quick to build. We saw earlier the, the, the scheduler. Let's talk now about the actions. So we've talked about the types of events, the types of triggers. And now let's look at some of the different types of actions that are, once again, very easy to set up and use. So the execute command action, that would allow you to call out to a third party application. So in the event, there are uh, some uh, scripts, for example, that you do want to reuse. Um, once again, a lot of what I've talked about is doing away with the scripts, but there's always the exception. Well, you know, we've got a very specific uh, task that we need to do. We do want to call our scripts. So you can certainly do that with, with, with the EFT product. You can uh, execute a command, which, in, which will call up a script. You can use the uh, PowerShell script, for example. You could call up a .exe. Um, so there's, that's, essentially, that's what a command does. Uh, Advanced workflows, we'll see a bit more about those. Those provide uh, over hundreds of actions, literally, when you go into the advanced workflow piece. Uh, send email, very simple, point and click. Copy, move, and download. These are two of the strongest events, because what EFT platform, the enterprise platform, has built into it is a client. It's got an integrated client in it, if you think about it what you're doing here. When you receive a file, for example, from an outside party, you've received that file. The EFT platform has acted as a server in order to allow that uh, external uh, client uh, or internal client, but the client uh, has connected, let's say it's over SFTP, and they transfer a file over the SFTP protocol to the EFT server. You have a workflow set up by which that you will then redistribute the file to the, a back-end system over perhaps SFTP again, or maybe you even change the protocol to HTTPS. The point being that that then EFT platform is acting as a client itself. So it is an integrated client is one way to think of, about it. It's both a server and a client. Uh, PGP is tightly integrated. Uh, therefore, it's easy to do PGP encryption, decryption, signing actions. Uh, cleanup of the uh, file system. You can automate that using the scheduler. It's 
So that's a built-in action. If you have a data retention policy, you can make use of that. You can also archive files before, perhaps before they are purged. Report generation can be automated. Uh, backup server configuration can be automated. Uh, right to the Windows event log, for example, and we'll see an example of that here in just a minute. That can uh, be part of your workflow. So if there's a problem, you may want to write an event into the event log. And uh, we support the AS2 protocol as well, and that's part of the automation engine. Um, when you're building a rule, you're going through and pointing and clicking, you're going to have the option on each action. So if we think of the decrypt as an action, if that action fails, then you'll have the ability to insert other actions. And it may just be that you want to send an email. It could be that you want to write to the Windows event log. You can chain these actions together. And once again, it's very uh, easy to do this. So it's a shot of the email notifier. One thing to take note of is there are a lot of variables that EFT, intrinsic variables that EFT has. And for example, in the email, uh, those variables are listed. So if this were a live demo, we would simply point and click, and those variables would be populated right here. Therefore, whoever receives this email can have a lot of information or context about what uh, the file transfer was, uh, the file name, for example, the path. Um, you can see a few of these date and timestamps. So all of this can be just uh, a matter of pointing and clicking. As I mentioned earlier, EFT enterprises, server, and client. So what you're looking at here is you're looking at the client side capability. If we were setting up a, in this case, it's a copy move, uh, then this is what the actual wizard would look like. So you would start to build this rule, and a wizard would pop up and start asking you to populate these fields. So first thing would be is what's the protocol that you're going to use to communicate with this system right here? You'll provide your credentials, because remember, now EFT is acting as a client, and you're going to be connecting to an SFTP system. Maybe you have uh, some Unix systems running inside your network internally, and perhaps uh, a file has come through um, externally through the DMZ gateway, made its way back to the EFT server, and that file has been dropped uh, on the EFT server. And you're creating this rule to turn around and retransmit it now um, to an internal Unix system, for example. So EFT, I used the term DMZ gateway earlier. That's the name of the product. But EFT platform in general, you can think of it as a type of gateway itself, a gateway between the external and the internal systems. One of the things, too, is I don't think we have a screenshot of it here, but there's a proxy button. So if this transfer, you acting as a client, actually we're going to go back across the internet and maybe this is even being set up through a scheduled event. Maybe you, you, you've gone down the path of you have a daily scheduler or, or weekly scheduler, and you have to reach out over the SFTP protocol across the internet, grab a file from a partner, and bring it back in. Well, the proxy button here would also give us the ability to proxy out through the DMZ gateway. So the gateway becomes a point of entry, reverse proxy, and a point of exit. So it can be the single uh, point for file transfer to your DMZ. When setting up these copy um, move rules or a download rule, either one, the wizard's just going to drive you through and ask you for the paths, ask you the relevant uh, questions. So once again, it's easy to use. basically the reverse to the copy move. This is the download. So you'll be pulling files um, or a batch of files. Um, there are wildcards supported there. So you could do star dot star or just star. As I mentioned, PGP is tightly encrypted. So as you're building out a rule, 
um, when you want to insert a PGP operation, let's say a file that you, let's say your organization has a relationship with an external party and part of the file transfer uh, rules dictate that PGP will be used so you've already sent your uh, key to them, your public key, so they're encrypting with your key and they're transmitting files to you. Uh, once the file makes its way to the EFT server, you've built a workflow by which uh, you want to go ahead and decrypt that package or that file and then you will chain and copy move to that. So PGP is inserting it as an action, uh, once again point and click and uh, the, the key ring uh, you would have all, all the keys. You can see the key ring there, a bit of it. Uh, so you would simply choose the appropriate key and uh, be done with it in a few uh, minutes. Just so showing the cleanup action that I mentioned earlier. This is an intrinsic action, uh, very uh, useful for data retention. Uh, so perhaps if you're building out a scheduled rule that says every so often we need to purge this part of the file system, um, perhaps before you do that, though, you um, have a copy move rule that will grab that data, grab those files, and move them off to an archive folder. Uh, perhaps you even want to lock them up with PGP while you do that. Write to the Windows event log. That's typically used um, on that if failed that we saw earlier. So if it's an if failed action, this may be one of the things that you uh, want to do. You want to send that information to the Windows event log. Perhaps you have another application that watches the Windows event log. So you can key off of that. If a, if a global scape event uh, drops into the event log, that other application may be alert, uh, being used to alert and monitor. Uh, EFT has a lot of its own built-in alerting capabilities uh, as well. Um, and uh, email is actually used quite often. So if a failed action, perhaps it's just you simply want to send an email to somebody. Uh, but there are other ways to do that as well. Advanced workflows um, actually will add hundreds of actions. So I talked about intrinsic event rules. And what I mean by that is the advanced workflow uh, is actually sold and licensed as a module on top of the EFT platform. So the EFT platform comes with a great deal of automation. The, the, the base platform comes with a great deal of automation and the intrinsic events and actions that, that I've covered. But once again, if your file handling needs to be a bit more complex, if you need to do things uh, such as create and populate your own variables. Perhaps you want to interact with a database directly, um, XML handling. Uh, literally hundreds of actions can be uh, completed through the um, advanced workflow module. Just recapping a few of those things that you can do. Uh, once again, database interaction. So, uh, rather than I've seen folks in the past actually, you know, they write their own SQL packages um, to orchestrate um, a file transfer. Perhaps you have some data coming in that uh, have maybe structured inside a file, and and that data ultimately is is is, is destined for a database. So, advanced workflow would give you the ability to do that right from the MFT, from the EFT platform as part of an event rule itself. Um, create variables, um, make use of regular expressions, uh, validate XML, for example. If you've got um, an XML schema that you need to validate files against, you can do that. There's some message queuing capability with an advanced workflow. Uh, you can interact with Excel files. Um, there's different compression options available in the advanced workflow, zip, uh, cab, um, digital signing capabilities. So if you need to sign files using keys, you can do that with advanced workflow. Uh, you can actually loop through files, look for content inside files, um, do directory. For example, if you're logging into a remote system and you want to check for a specific file on that remote system. You can pull down a directory listing first and compare that using advanced workflow capabilities. 
Um, you can also interact directly with an Exchange mailbox, with a, um, where um, it supports uh, SMT as, SMTP as well. So, uh, for example, if you receive a uh, file um, on the MFT platform and you want that file to actually get emailed to somebody, you could automate that. So the actual file itself can show up as an attachment in somebody's inbox. These are just a few of the things. Uh, literally, there are just hundreds of different uh, permutations of how you might use the advanced workflow. There's a, on the automation aspect, as you can imagine, you could spend a lot of time talking about all the nuances and all the, the specifics. But for today's presentation, the idea was just to you know, give you a peek at some of the automation capabilities of the enhanced file transfer platform and hopefully get you interested enough to have a deeper conversation with us. Um, so really, James, that's it f uh, for me. Thanks, Chris. Uh, good stuff, good stuff, thanks. Okay, um, we're just coming to the end of the presentation now. Has anyone got any questions? We haven't had any questions yet. Um, just put them in the little chat box at the bottom of the window if you have. Um, no, okay. Well, thank you very much for attending, attending everyone. Um, and thank you, Chris, once again presenting. Uh, here's our contact details if you want to get in touch with us, if you do want to have a deeper conversation about anything. We're also offering a free 30-day EFT server trial, or of course, if, if there's any specifics you want to look into, we can uh, get one of our tech guys online to, to, to run through a, a live demo for you. Um, but as I said, you can contact us on uh, telephone, email, or via the website. It's on the screen there. Uh, telephone is plus four four zero eight four five six four three four oh six three or you can get us at hand dot co dot uk. Thank you very much again everyone. Cheers.